wake up, 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 wake up. Is immersed, is immersed, the podcast, the podcast and book. And book. We, are we are delighted to have you join, have us. You join us. Immersed is immersed produced, is produced by, Charlie by Charlie Morrow, Morrow Sean, McCann, Sean McCann, and Bart Plantinga for Morrow Sounds, Vermont, Vermont, and Helsinki, and, Helsinki, and, recital, and recital Edition, edition Los, Angeles. Los, Angeles. Los Angeles. I'm Anaya Lockwood. Immerse. 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 I'm Charlie Morrow, and my Immerse podcast will guide you through the world of immersive experience in sound, light, and space. Sound, sound light, light, space. Pamela Z is a composer, performer, and media artist who creates works for voice, electronic processing, samples, gesture-activated MIDI controllers, and video. She's toured throughout the U.S., Europe, and Japan. She's composed scores for dance, film, and chamber ensembles, including the Kronos Quartet. Her awards include the Rome Prize, a Guggenheim Fellowship, and many more. She and I met when she was commissioned by The Kitchen in New York to create a 3D music work for my True 3D Sound Cube in 2004. So, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. I'm in Vermont. Home and archive here is uh, in the mountains. So, what I'm doing here is I'm working on a book and a podcast called Immerse. The questions I wanted to ask you about are, there's just two. One is, what is your current practice relative to immersive experience and creating immersive experiences? And the uh, other question is, when were you first inspired in this direction and how did it lead from that point forward? Well, let's see. The, uh, to answer the first part about what's currently happening Very interesting that you should ask that because I just, I mean, literally two days ago had an opening at the American Academy in Rome as part of an exhibition called Cinque Mostre that is a piece called Sonora Spolia. At the same time... At the same time. At the same time. At the same time. And that is a piece that that I created by making interviews with about 40 people, mostly Rome Prize fellows that are here with me at the American Academy, but also some of their fellow travelers and a couple of visiting artists, visiting scholars, and one, one or two people on the staff here. So the idea was that I was going to create this piece. Actually, the larger work that I'm working on here is going to be a performance work. Um, I've been working very hard on it. And the idea, basically, this configuration of the piece is a 21-channel sound installation. But it's essentially in this uh, cryptoporticus, which is, you know, this long, uh, sort of a wonderful arched hallway with seven skylights where light comes in from the cortile above. And then there's, uh, for each skylight, I have three speakers hanging. And so then it goes all the way down this long hallway. So it's, so it's very long, sort of three by seven array of speakers. And I had designed the piece so that all these different fragments of speech sounds that I took from the interviews that I did uh, are all being distributed among those speakers. And so the experience 
of the piece involves walking along that hallway uh, in and among the speakers, almost like a little garden of of sound <laughs> and with these voices popping up at all these different spots. So it's it's very immersive. It's probably more immersive as a sonic piece than anything I've made for a while. And so it's interesting that that just so happens to be the project that I was in the midst of trying to complete when you contacted me. That's the thing I've been working on. And my plan is to go forward with I'm making a solo performance work. And some of that material that was used in this 21 channel sound installation will certainly make its way into the performance work, but it will be immersive in a different way. It will it certainly will, will not be 21 channels that are discrete channels in the performance space. It'll more likely be a version of it that's just in a stereo but very spatialized stereo or a, maybe some places have this ability to do quad or some other kind of immersive thing so the sound can be somewhat immersive. But I tend to work sort of back and forth between those. I, I, I tend to do a lot of work that doesn't require a, a multi-channel sound situation. And then I've had works that I've made that do require that and that I've adapted them for a situation that doesn't have that kind, where I've had spatialized pieces that were originally intended to just be, you know, stereo in the first place. Yeah. So. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Uh, could I ask you what first inspired you to, you know, with sound and environmental sound altogether? Did something occur to you as a, as a baby or some, somewhere <laughs> along the line that Lit, lit the fire? Well, I think I've been interested in sound and I've been, been involved in, in music making also similarly long. And for me, the, the line between those things is very blurry and has never been clear to me. But I think I would say that a big turning point in my life artistically and sonically uh, occurred in the in the early 80s when I started playing with electronics and with processing my voice with electronics. And that opened up my ears in a way, helped me to begin listening in a way that I had never listened to before. And it made, it just sort of changed the trajectory of the way that I compose and the way that I put together sound and the way I think about sound. And that occurred, I would say like 80, 82, 83 in there. And that was probably like the single biggest turning point that I can think of. Other interesting markers along the way are times when I was asked to make installation works. I was asked to make a, a sound piece once for a gallery in Chicago. They had this exhibition called The Art of Artist Statement. And they asked all the artists involved to make something or contribute something to the show that had some relationship to the idea of artist statements, thinking about what, how do artists feel about having to write them, anything like that. So I recorded the sound of my own voice saying the sentence, I would like to think that the art itself would be enough of a statement. The, the art, art itself. itself. Think to think. To think. To think. To think. To think. think, think, to think, think. think. To think, to think, think, to 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 that was built entirely out of me saying those words. Most of it was unintelligible in terms of as language, but every once in a while, sentences would pop out. And at that time, this was long before I had the capabilities or the wherewithal to make a piece that was running off of a computer multi-channel sound. So I was trying to figure out a way to make a multi-channel piece that would sort of surround and envelop the audience. And the idea that I came up with was to make a six-channel piece, but each channel would be half of a stereo pair that was panned hard left and hard right so that you actually had six discrete things. And then I created three stereo files that were all slightly different lengths that had these fragments of speech built in them. And then 
they would all play on a loop on, I believe, CD players. <laughs> and so then there was two channels coming from each CD player surrounding them in the gallery so that there was, you know, six speakers all the way around. And it was a constantly changing piece because the files were all different lengths. And so they would loop, but they would loop and out of phase with each other so that you could sit in the gallery all day and you'd never really hear the same combination of sounds twice. And so that was, if I remember, I mean, I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head, but if memory serves, that is maybe the first multi-channel sound installation that I made. Um, And then another really important sort of moment for me was your series that you did in the cube at the lab. Uh, No, I say the lab. I mean the kitchen. (laughs) The lab is in San Francisco. The kitchen is in New York. At the kitchen in New York, you did this wonderful series of basically you curated many different composers, sound artists who were making pieces that would be on your cube, your sound cube in the, in the kitchen. And so I believe that the piece I made for that wound up being part of a triptych of pieces that I later made that were also for various configurations of multi-channel sound. But that was kind of a nice turning point for me when we did that because I had to really sit down and learn how to think about putting sound in all these different, like how to make decisions about where each of these sounds was going to come from and how they were going to, you know, interact with each other in this very specific kind of a multi-channel immersive situation. So yeah, that was, that was kind of a, an important one. Um, And then I'll, I'll mention one other piece that I made that was quite immersive and in this case was both video and sound. So I don't know if you're if if you're familiar with this guy, not human. I sure am. <laughs> he had um, at the time a gallery in San Francisco called Recombinant Media Labs, and he has since then re reanimated that project as something that happens at the Gray Area Theater in San Francisco. But at that time, it was in his Recombinant Media Labs gallery. So he has this this uh, room that he calls the Cine Chamber, which involves ten frame locked channels of wide HD video, and uh, so that that go around uh, the room in a three hundred and sixty degree seamless kind of configuration. The room at the time was 24 feet by 36 feet. So there were 10 12 foot wide screens, two on each end of the room and three on each of the long sides of the room. And they were all just end to end in this 360 degree configuration. And then he had 16 channels of, I think he had 16 speakers that were in the corners and various places in the room. And I think there were subwoofers maybe implanted under the floor or something. And so I was commissioned to make a piece for that space. And everything I had ever seen in there at at that point had been people either showing 10 copies of the same single channel piece, or sometimes they would show a two channel piece that would just alternate the screens. But I hadn't seen anybody really um, make a piece that was site specific to that room. Since then, I've seen some amazing works for that configuration, but at that time I had not. But I was determined to make something that was really meant for that space. So I made a piece called Sonic Gestures, and it had 10 channels of video, and they were all discrete channels of video, but often they would work together so that sometimes, for example, I had these long arm gestures where my arm was reaching and I would extend the same image across the three screens that would be on one of the wide walls so you'd end up with this 36 foot long arm reaching. And then there were these sounds that were associated with the gestures. Sometimes there would be vocal sounds that were connected to those gestures as I was making them. And sometimes there were sounds that would be results of the gestures. For example, there was one whole section of the piece where I just was clapping my hands. And so there were 10 different 
version videos of my hand extremely slowed them down so that the clapping sound became very low frequency almost like thunder claps and the hands were moving slowly so they were getting a sort of a motion blur as they clapped several other movements including one that actually bizarrely had text on the screen that was wrapping itself around and it was a section that I called the long URL and it was just this incredibly long uh, internet address that just kept getting more and more characters added to it and then my voice reciting the characters and sort of spinning around the people's heads at, so, at somewhat dizzying speeds. H T T P colon slash slash www dot due to high call volume underscore extremely long ampersand dash carrot dash stick equals you might want to write this down comma all one word plus sideways frowny face colon open parenthesis so that was sonic gestures and that piece was kind of a major thing for me because I was doing a lot of work with video and performance, but I think it was the first sort of major video piece that I made. And it was also multi-channel video and multi-channel sound. And it was intended to be in entirely immersive that people would be inside of this 360 degree array and just be surrounded on all sides by image and sound. I've since had the opportunity to show that piece in a number of a couple of different galleries in Europe because now it's much easier to do that just using a computer for the output for the, all those channels. But yeah, so those are three kinds of examples of things that I've done with immersive sort of sonic environments and in, the, in one case uh, also video. Well, thank you for those wonderful descriptions. Uh you're very vividly uh, conveyed what the, what they're like, and I would hope to experience them myself. They they sound wonderful. I appreciate very much that we could have this conversation, and delighted that you made the time to meet me today. So thank you very much. Absolutely, no problem at all. It was fun, and I hope that we cross paths again soon, Charlie. Thanks, thanks for the project you're working on. It sounds great. Much appreciated. We'll be in touch. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. This is Immerse, the podcast and book. Immerse is produced by Charlie Morrow, Sean McCann, and Bart Plantenga for Morrow Sound, Vermont and Helsinki, and Recital Edition, Los Angeles. Immerse. 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 It's about to end.